Before my last cruise, I had no idea you could get internet at sea without paying for the ship's Wi-Fi. Turns out you can, and it's called a cruise eSIM. I used a provider called GigSky, and I was honestly surprised how easy it was once I understood what to do. But finding clear info online, well, that wasn't easy, which is why I'm making this video. So what even is a cruise eSIM? An eSIM is a digital version of a SIM card. No need to swap anything physical. You just scan a code, download the data plan you want, and off you go. But here is the key. Most eSIMs work on land or in foreign countries, but a cruise eSIM is different. They're designed to work at sea by connecting to the ship's satellite network. So yes, you can use data at sea. With SkyGig, I was able to check emails, message friends, and use Duolingo, and even scroll through Facebook and videos whilst cruising in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, all without paying $30 a day for the ship's Wi-Fi. But it isn't perfect, and there are some things to know. When your ship first leaves port, you'll be in this blackout zone. There's no signal until you're about 14 nautical miles out to sea. So to be clear, it works in port and it works out at sea, but in between the two, you will not have reception. And sometimes the signal can also drop randomly. Now, this isn't a 5G city connection. It's bouncing off satellite and using the ship's network. So don't expect to Zoom call your boss without interruption from your cabin. But if you're just doing light work, social media messages, emails, it's great. And let's be honest, if you're on a cruise and in a work Zoom meeting, you're doing it wrong. So your step-by-step -step guide in how to use a cruise eSIM like GigSky and what I wish someone had told me before I left is step one, make sure your phone is eSIM compatible. Now, most newer iPhones and Androids are, so this shouldn't be an issue, but you'll need to be connected to the Wi-Fi during setup. So it's good to do it at home before you leave. Step two, go to the GigSky website and choose the plan that's right for you. You'll see cruise specific options. Uh, pick your cruise line or your region and you'll see plans are usually based on days or data limits. So make sure you're covered sufficiently for the time you'll be away. You can also download the Gig Sky app. Just go to the app store on your phone, search Gig Sky open it up and you'll see all the plans there as well and it will guide you through the activation process. I just find it easier personally to use the website but it's your preference. Step three, you'll scan the QR code that they'll email you and this will install your eSIM automatically onto your phone. Your phone will then have both your usual number, your primary number and the new data profile. So whilst it's good to have all this done before your cruise, maybe don't activate anything uh, until a day or two before sailing, unless you have enough days in your plan to cover your trip. You can also rename the eSIM if you want something clear like Fiji Cruise, or you can just leave it as it is. If you want to rename it, you can do this by going to Settings, Mobile Service, tap the new eSIM, and then just rename it to whatever you like. But leave it off for now. You'll turn it on when you board. So make sure you're familiar with all of this before your cruise. And then when you are on board, here is the next part to get you all eSIM ready. So now you're boarding. Let's go to opening your phone settings. Tap the settings icon on your home screen, then tap mobile services or cellular on some phones and you'll see there both your sims are listed you'll have your primary sim your usual number and your cruise e-sim so gig sky or whatever you've named it now you'll turn off your aussie sim or your primary sim so to do this tap the primary sim and then toggle this to off and this stops your phone from connecting to roaming towers. And this is what's going to save you from those surprise bills. So make sure that's off. Then turn on your cruise eSIM. Tap your cruise eSIM then toggle turn on this line so you get your eSIM working. Then scroll down under the eSIM plan and turn on data roaming. Yes, it's OK to turn roaming on here. It has to be on so it can connect to the ship's network. 
you will not be charged extra because GigSky or whatever you're using has prepaid data. You've already paid for it. So you're just allowing the eSIM to access that. And the last step here is set your eSIM as your new data source. So go back to mobile service on your main screen, tap mobile data, select your cruise eSIM and you're done. You're now safely using your eSIM. There'll be no Aussie roaming, no surprise charges. But if you're like me, you're probably going to worry about the roaming. So here is it very simply. If your Aussie SIM or your primary SIM is off, you'll avoid roaming bills. But your cruise eSIM needs to be on so that it works at sea. It's prepaid. You won't be charged more. Roaming must be on for the cruise eSIM to work, but it's not dangerous when you're using a prepaid eSIM like GigSky. It's like unlocking the gate to your prepaid data. You're in control and there's no meter running here. So here's my final Hello. thoughts. Cruise eSIMs like GigSky won't be able to compete with your home fiber optic technology, but for staying connected at sea without breaking the bank, they're a game changer and honestly, I'm hopeless with technology and I was okay using one after a bit of research and a bit of practice. So I hope this video helps you and if you've got a cruise coming up, you can stay connected now without those crazy ship Wi-Fi fees. Enjoy your trip and of course, happy sailing. Bye.